Hello and welcome to the pre-lecture for flipped classroom event number three, uh, Metabolic Pathway Engineering. Um, so we talked all this week about different reasons to do uh, pathway engineering, different applications, um, and one of the one of the most popular ones anyway is um, making a novel or new product. Um, basically um, creating a strain that will allow you to make a new product from uh, an old carbon source range potentially or even a new carbon source range uh, to be quite honest but um, one of the main things here is that you're extending the metabolic capabilities of your organism um, we are using industrial organisms to make products. Organisms like E. coli, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, um, Pseudomonas, uh, Ralstonia eutropha, um, organisms like that. Uh, we are working on their carbon metabolism. We're looking at their carbon metabolism. How can we affect it to make the cell do things that we want it to do have them make the products that we want them to make and make lots of them and affect the yields and the productivities in such a way that we are helped by this that we can potentially create a process around create a process and potentially even create a company around um, of course we will play with carbon flux carbon flux though we will save that uh, for a later date for later classes because we'll talk a lot about that coming up but we will think for this we're gonna think more uh, conceptual we'll think more with a broad we'll paint with a broad brush here uh, we will establish our goal which is to redirect that carbon flux uh, we're not going to quantitate that carbon flux of course but we're going to redirect it from one product to another that's essentially what we're going to do that also happens to be the challenge of all this is to actually redirect that carbon flux from one product which the cell naturally makes which it knows how to make it's developed its niche probably because it makes that product and then have it make something completely different how can we reconcile that how can we get good yields um, having the cell make something it's not used to making uh, the first way we can do that is by at least giving it the opportunity to do this, to give it the pathway genes, to have it express the pathway genes, uh, and see if we can at least detect products. So we're essentially starting by going out with the old. So for example, we have Ralstonia eutropha here, which makes a biopolymer, uh, this po polyhydroxyalkanoate here, and you can see the cells basically fill up with this uh, polymer, this bioplastic. It makes a lot of this polyhydroxyalkanoate. So what we're trying to do is we're going to divert carbon, because polyhydroxyalkanoate is mostly carbon, we're going to divert that from a traditional product, a product that the organism in the wild would make uh, in the microbial metabolism. The first thing we would do, the simplest thing, would be to just eliminate that entire pathway or block it somehow so in the case of Ralstonia eutropha it's no longer making uh, polyhydroxyalkanoid it's a uh, suddenly become a cell that does not make this bioplastic so we would essentially have a clean slate with which to work and we can potentially use this organism or this strain of this organism to create new bioproducts and then in with the new. Once we have blocked that pathway, the carbon flux will be upset. Uh, upset in quotes there, not really upset in terms of angry, of course, but just carbon, which is used to going into polyhydroxyalkanoid, will have to, something will have to happen to it. Um, and it will, the cell will react in funny ways and it will try to tell us something that, hey, I've got this carbon I don't know what to do with, so let me just do something with it the best way I know how and it might end up secreting a lot of carbon compounds that end up being useful. Uh, that is especially true if we remove a carbon sink like PHA in which cells 
uh, typically make a lot of PHA, polyhydroxyalkanoate, uh, to store as a carbon storage mechanism. They can't do that anymore, so now carbon has to go somewhere, potentially it just flows out of the cell, and we can take advantage of that, reclaim that, and repurpose that carbon for a different product. That's the idea. And the, uh, one product that is a popular one these days is our higher alcohols like isobutanol here. So again, Ralstonia produces polyhydroxybutyrate, which is a polyhydroxyalkanoate bioplastic. It's a well-known bioproduct. There's a lot in the literature about this. Um, there have been companies made uh, because of this whole biology of this organism and the whole technology behind uh, using this polymer as a bioplastic, as a biodegradable plastic. So it's a very useful thing and while stony eutropha then uh, becomes a industrially relevant organism uh, that we can use to make bioproducts. So we know it produces PHB and it's been used in industry to produce PHB and other polyhydroxyalkanoates. But if we eliminate it, if we eliminate its ability to make PHB, that results in the organism, the strain that we've made, which cannot produce the polymer anymore. It has to do something with that carbon, so it's secreting what you would think is a valuable molecule, pyruvate. It's making a lot of pyruvate, and then it secretes it. And it seems like a complete waste of carbon, potentially. Um, but the organism, once it's done growing, it has to figure out some way to take care of that carbon. So it's bringing it in, it's converting it, but it's no longer able to um, convert it into a storage polymer and keep it in the cell. So it doesn't know what to do. We've essentially kind of amputated something uh, in a way for the cell. Uh, and it doesn't know what to do, so it's going to... it. It turns it into pyruvate and secretes it. That's just what it does. That somehow keeps the cell in balance enough and uh, gives the organisms that surround the cells uh, an extra pyruvate snack if this w was to be in the wild. Of course, we're not growing these in the wild, so that's really a moot point. The bottom line is that you eliminate this pathway, they secrete pyruvate. We can take advantage of that. We can take advantage of this carbon imbalance um, and channel that carbon to something. The carbon can be channeled to a different product and that product we can pick and I talked to you about a product uh, a little bit earlier that we could pick, this isobutanol. Uh, so we can pick that product and the question is how do we tie that product or whatever product we choose to cellular metabolism. And I have been talking over the past week uh, specifically tying it to central metabolism you know, making it go through um, acetyl-CoA or pyruvate. In this case, because pyruvate is what's being secreted, it's the central metabolite. We can start from there. You know, we have an excellent place to start. The cell is potentially making a lot of pyruvate and getting rid of it. Uh, so let's use that for something. Let's pyruvate is value in, valuable in and of itself, but let's use that to make uh, a different value-added product. We can start from there where we have to ask the question uh, where does pyruvate go usually in the cell so we can look at the cells we can look at their genes we can look at their potential pathways that they have and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago and you can kind of get a picture a visual of what they do with certain what cells do with certain metabolites pyruvate is a fairly easy one uh, a lot of enzymes, a lot of genes that revolve around pyruvate utilization are very highly conserved and they're very um, they're very necessary for optimal cell survival. So uh, there's not too too many surprises here. Uh, and they can make phosphoenol pyruvate, uh, they can make uh, both D and L forms of lactate, malate, and things like that. Uh, they can even go into making amino acids, of course, acetyl-CoA, and then going into the TCA cycle. So as a central metabolite, we can imagine pyruvate going to lots of different places. 
And when we construct a recombinant organism that's going to use this pyruvate that's ultimately getting secreted from the cell right now, we do we take into account these competing pathways? Are these competing pathways what we would call carbon sinks? Are they taking carbon away from what will ultimately be our product? And that could potentially be a concern. But pyruvate isn't the only molecule that has places to go and has things to do, has things to become, really. The central metabolites are important for a reason. So something like ketoisovalerate, which can be made from pyruvate. Um, and that's going into making amino acids and isobutyl-CoA, things like that. Um, even um, major cofactors and things like that, like pantothenic acid. Um, so these carbon compounds are very important and we got to deduce what we think the cell could potentially live without or live with less of um, in order to get uh, our product could they live without any of this stuff and we don't we don't know the answer to that question until we start to look at uh, where the carbon is actually going uh, and again that is something that's more for the carbon flux but it is good uh, the carbon flux discussion, but it is good to know that these carbon molecules get converted into all sorts of different things. That there are competing pathways for that intermediate that you want to use uh, to make a, a, an interesting and novel product. So the flip class essentially is going to be we're constructing a strain, uh, in this case of Ralston eutrophil, like I've been talking about that produces alcohol instead of polyhydroxyalkanoate. So we have the beginnings of a strain that would do that uh, in that we would delete the PHA pathway, the PHA synthesis pathway. And where do we go from there? How do we harness that pyruvate into making the molecules that we want? And you will see in the readings uh, essentially, you will kind of see a list of ways to do this, kind of a parts list of what we can do, what we can put in to a recombinant Ralstone eutroph in order to make a strain that produces um, alcohol, that produces higher alcohols, like isobutanol. And you will essentially, with the flip class activity, you will be asked questions about that. So given what you know, what you've learned over the past two days about metabolic pathway manipulation. You want to design a pathway in a well-studied bacterial species. Uh, and that bacterial species is Ralston eutrophic. You want to expand the product range of the bacterium to make alcohol. What we're actually doing is we're swapping out products. We're swapping out bioplastic for biofuels, for isobutanol here. Do we need to consider any of the other applications for pathway manipulation? Um, you know, we talked about five applications of the metabolic pathway manipulation. Um, basically, our main application here is the novel product here. Um, so that was one, I think, the third application we discussed. But do any other applications need to be considered? And we have to think about that. So based on the readings and this lecture, um, you will work with your group and you will plan the construction of an organism. You're being very conceptual here. Uh, this is less about calculating where ATP, carbon, and things like that are going, less about balancing the, the books in mass balances, and more about let's begin to design a novel biocatalyst that does a certain thing. Um, and just take what you've read, or what you've looked over anyway, uh, and what you've learned so far, and answer some questions and get to the point where you're making a strain uh, that does a certain thing, instead of another certain thing. So look over, again, you don't have to read cover to cover, but look over the readings that are in the fold, this flipped class folder and get an idea of what you are to be working with uh, because the questions have uh, a lot of bearing on this 
and that I will expect you to be using uh, the things that you've begun to learn about in uh, designing the strain and uh, everything should be there where you can put a strain together and answer the questions uh, comprehensively. So I look forward to trying this with you and we will work on this on Friday.